The way they play, or do you feel it's just the way they've matched up that they found it difficult against OG? I, mean, I, I think the, the mentality is definitely going to be better. They, they won 2-0. Like, yes, they have the previous games, but they also beat two teams that they maybe were expecting to have trouble with. I, I think they're going to be really happy, especially considering everybody, a lot of people thought that they weren't going to do very well. Yeah. At least people not on Twitter or Twitch. Well, they still have to win this best of three to... They certainly Continue do. We are, uh, we are into the draft, as you can see, we've had three bans. And, uh, is that pretty much what we expected? Yeah, I mean, definitely the Earth Spirit. It's, it's definitely following the, the, the Mena. Definitely the Earth Spirit, definitely the Beastmaster. A little surprised by the Life Stealer. Stealer. Yeah. I think that's more of a Navi favorite hero than OG. But No Tail can pick it up, and it is one of those fighting cores that can, you know, deal physical damage and also uh, not take up so much space because Miracle will need that. Well, Miracle also does play the Life Stealer. He played it in this tournament previously and he went like 10-1 and one earlier, so... But now we do see, uh, you know, a big change up from that last series, Phoenix first pick. Yeah, which we, we've highlighted the fact that this thing right now, the Sunray hero, has 32% win rate I, I, uh, I just, whilst here. I feel like OG's going to be able to draft something that's a solution to that. I wasn't going to say Crystal Maiden, but... Uh... Has, been, has been picked against it in a few matches. I think it's just more of a flex pick. It's just... You can run in a lot of ways. It's, it's, a, it's, a, fly, it's a fly hero, it leaves yeah. your draft very open-ended. You can jungle with it, you can also secure lanes with it. It doesn't require a lot of levels. Do you flex click it this early though? Like, doesn't this just mean? No, probably Bobby... not. I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I think they're doing it this early just because it leaves the rest of their draft That's open. Been void. Wow, it, an instant Marana pick. Instant Marana pick. And it, it does make Miracle better in his lane. Okay. If you've got extra mana, he's going to get more value. You don't necessarily have to be there. There's there's value there. And it does work well with Faces Void. You stand near the Chrono, you turn on your ultimate. Mm -hmm. Even if they interrupt it, that's still a stun on you and not a stun on an ally. There's yep. there's benefits. But I, I just the biggest thing about picking Crystal Maiden early is I fear a hero like Slark that's just going to eat her alive and that she can't deal with very well. But that's like, this is like I a mean, super like, five. On the, this is a super five yeah. Crystal Maiden fly playing because usually I feel like OG picks like... Sly's playing a Crystal Maiden and Crit's playing like a Doom or something, let's say, so... That's true. That would I help out Doom Room a lot. Agreed, too. and yeah. like, half the hero pool eats Crystal Maiden alive, so... Yeah. That's just my biggest problem with the hero. And she's slow. And she's slow. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> you're just picking OCN. I don't okay. want to say anything she's else. She's been buffed a bunch of times now, after getting heavily nerfed in a couple patches quite a long time ago. Yeah. And so far, both these heroes are heroes that can set up Miracle. The CM and the Void. The Trail Band with the Invoker. Yeah, I like the Invoker Band a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great Miracle hero that combos well with the Void. Yeah, just one of many. For him. Mm -hmm. I feel like they have to ban Puck. No? Sure, I feel like they have to have 10 bans. He played a really good Puck earlier. It's another hero that has extra mana. He can be really aggressive. It's good against Phoenix. Pretty good against Morana. This is the thing, when you have a superstar player like Miracle, or you have a player that tends to take games like really, really late and be, and is known for you know, carrying his team to, to victory, I feel like a lot of teams make the mistake of trying to ban out his heroes. And usually that player plays more heroes that you can ban out. I think the correct approach is not to ban out his heroes or to focus a lot of attention on him in the early game. The correct approach is to make sure that during his power spikes, you have a draft that can deal with it. So instead of, like, in the, in the heydays of anti-mage, instead of constantly ganking the anti-mage's lane, you make sure that your late game carry can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against an anti-mage. Okay, so that's the, that's the Miracle Hero. Not the most synergy with the Void. Are you sure it's not offlane Void? It could be offlane Void, it also could be safe lane Juggernaut, it could be a No-Tail Hero. Right, he does play a lot of Jug, I feel. It's, it's very consistent, it provides team fight. Okay. You can All pick right. it early and not be punished in a lot of ways. I mean, it's I, I think at this point it's it, it could be either or. Okay. Yeah, depending on the mid matchup. I thought just the way, you know, because we were saying how much we want, uh, we would like No Tail to be playing those tempo heroes. I think that's not really the most tempo hero in comparison. It's definitely not, but it can also fight. If you move away from sort of the Battle Fury builds and you go something like Aquila into uh, Diffusal or something like that, or Vanguard Diffusal. He has some manta. So we did see this exact opening from Navi the other day, and they they did put Dendi on a Batrider mid. Not sure if they'll do the same approach because they kind of just adjusted. 
against a Jug, I feel like it's a bit iffy. He's already carried. Yeah. That's kind of hard to gank. So mm -hmm. if he gets a spin off, then your arrow setup doesn't work. And then, although they did do offlane Marana, so it's not like you're yeah. all in on the arrow like a support would normally be. Mm -hmm. What I like about both these teams so far is that they have left their options very open. It's it's hard to tell where exactly they're going to lane, who's going to play what. Uh, they found quite a, a lot of Lycan picks, Navi, recently as well. Have it's a really good bad, win rate with it as well, 81% of 16 games. Yeah, I mean, it's a really strong hero this patch, as Team Liquid has demonstrated, and I'm surprised that other teams aren't favoring it as much. No surprise on the Enchantress pick, uh, Navi is picking either Chen or Enchant in the first round, actually, at the group stage, yep. consistently. Yeah, like we were saying, you know, that, that early aggression. However, this does kind of leave you to a point where the Phoenix is a pure 5 now, because Enchantress, yeah. unless he's going to be a pure 5, which we don't really see too, too often, Art Styles usually actually ends up finding his farm everywhere, but Seneko usually does too, but he, he gets it through just pure team fight. Yeah, I think it's fine that they that they picked it like that. He usually gets enough gold anyways, and this is yeah. another reason that OG opened with Crystal Maiden, because they knew that Navi is very likely to pick Enchantress Chen. They would have banned either of those heroes probably in second phase. I don't know if they do first phase, but definitely second phase oh. if they didn't have CM. Oh man, I'm yeah, gonna really we were, enjoy this we game We were now. waiting for this. Oh, yes. We've been waiting this for this number oh, stage. One of those heroes. We've yep. been waiting for it throughout the group stage, and we oh, knew well. it was coming at some point. We were saying we, we feel like teams are holding back on yeah. picking the other Titan until the main uh, stage, and now we do see it. So I, I thought I saw awesome numbers, and he was at a zero percent win rate with three games. But maybe it's the wrong spread. I know I saw VGR play it once in the group stage. But yeah, they I, haven't won a game so far. Yeah, and I don't really yeah. recall yeah, seeing it. Not, it's not a, a, a full level of insight. It's also an incredible uh, synergy with the Void. However, you can't move the Spirit inside of the Chrono anymore. Of okay. course, the Elder Titan Ultimate inside of Chronosphere is extremely powerful. And this is actually an approach that I believe the old Secret used to do when Fly was playing for them. They used to use the Crystal Maiden and the Elder Titan together in this in this uh, unison. Yeah, uh, the CM Aura is so good for those other three heroes, actually. Yeah. So good for Juggernaut. He can spin more in lane, he can use healing ward whenever he wants. Uh, Elder Titan needs more mana in the early game, sometimes is, is delayed because he has to afford a soul ring. And not to mention that it, it enhances all the magic damage they have with the uh, Void Crystal Maiden and physical damage from Void Juggernaut. It's it's just super synergistic. Yeah. yeah I I wonder if fights. I'm wondering if they'll do maybe like a dual lane with like the Elder Titan Void, but I guess no, we'll see. I think, I think what we'll see is very similar to how Shazam ran the, the Elder Titan in the qualifiers, is that Crit's gonna take that Elder Titan and sit mid. He's sit gonna, mid. And yeah. he's gonna throw that spirit on, on Dendi over and over again, and then he's gonna run up to him and punch him with that staple gun. How do you feel about I mean, this axe pick? This is... It is... They need team fight. They are picking axe into three melee heroes of yes. OG, which is good. Only the second time Navi have had an axe in a pro game in the last three months. Yeah. It's bit of a change. Maybe they're going for like uh, having the axe kind of one v one versus the void in a manner, and then have him, you know, general playing that Mirana with an art style playing around uh, his off lane. Yeah, that's we did see sense. that. We did see them do that approach in the group stages. Yeah, it's it's very likely going to be off lane Mirana, definitely. Um, but they needed something to set up for their fights. They needed yeah. an intro stun. They can't rely on Mirana to do it. It's otherwise it makes Mirana kind of bad for a long period of the yeah. game. Um, and it'll be able to grab Jug if he spins. They can lock down Void for three seconds and get follow up and kill him. An yeah. Axe Phoenix Egg is a tremendous yeah. combo. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. So even if Jug spins and hits Egg, Axe can still stop oh, him from hitting. Yes. And I feel like this is kind of a Navi like approach. Of course, not the they haven't picked the exact to do the Axe, but I feel like the Chirad tends to play those like mid-game eccentric heroes like, like like Furion, Axe, like, you haven't even seen him play like short lane Beastmaster and stuff, even like Void, just some, some things that are a little bit out of the ordinary. And I, I really like that band, because like like Charlie was saying, you know, three melee heroes, you don't really want to be playing versus a Medusa especially, so right. I, I like that approach by OG. Hmm, so what do you think OG needs now? They need a. They need more damage that doesn't require big cooldowns. Because right now their only good damage is like CMO juggled, a farmed carry void, or Elder Titan ult. And that's kind of hard to land. So they need more consistent damage and possibly some more burst. Ooh. Oh, this game got so much okay. harder. Oh, I like this so much. That's... I'm just always happy to see Tinkers, man. I love, I love the way it looks with the Agonim Scepter. 
just the laser bouncing and multiple rockets is is just so, a pretty it's a pretty thing to say. This is this is OG's in a real tough place right now. They need something that's more consistent than shutting down a tinker. Void is okay, not great. Uh, we we've seen that before. Um, and then they need something that G good gap can close la can lane against the tinker as well. Like and then it's so it'd probably be a miracle hero, but and he tends to play a little more greedy and then all th all three cores are need levels, need farm. Oh, oh. Okay, well, uh, it's, it's with Jug Void. So miracle mag. Have we have we seen this? I mean, I why, why not? He can play like 115 heroes, I'm sure. Have we ever seen him play this competitive though? Uh, I'm really not sure. I think so. I think I've seen No Tail maybe play it for them before, no. but. They haven't played it in the last three months anyway. All right. Not this is uh, patches, this is so. dicey. This is dicey for OG. It is. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Charlie and Fox, and of course Purged. Uh, we are done on the panel. How is this going to go down? Let's head over to our commentators now for OG versus Navi. It's Malini, and for the first time today, Toby won. Thank you very much, Red. Yes, it's absolutely great to be here. We have ourselves one hell of a matchup. We have Na'Vi, the guys that won TI1, but have struggled to actually win any Valve event since that point. You got OG, the major winners. They come here. Both teams have picked up a little bit of form as well. Who's really got the edge here? I think OG has this. All right, you have OG? <laughs> well, let's go find out. We're going to go straight into the game. Na'Vi going up against OG. I can't wait for it. And it is time to get underway. Navi versus OG, game number one of this best of three. The winner's bracket is where both these teams ended up after Navi actually topped out of their group. I don't think many people would have predicted that they would be here coming into this tournament after, especially like OG, who 3 0 them at Dream League. Yeah, that's why I have to favor OG in this matchup. We already see a misclick, it seems, Miracle with a clarity popped as he was trying to get pulled some tangos. I think they have a lot of good ways to deal with a Tinker. Um, most importantly, you want to stop his Blink so he can't just constantly move about in the trees. The Elder Titan is really good at that, and Chrono especially is great at locking him down. Mm -hmm. Let's actually talk about the big problem, um, which is a, t a hero which both these, play, uh, both these teams played a lot, uh, the Phoenix. So we look at him, how is OG really meant to keep Seneko out of this fight? And is he actually a big problem? Because you're running a full melee lineup plus a Crystal Maiden up against Nova. Name of the game, as usual, is positioning. If they can catch him in one of the big AoE ultimates, he's certainly going to die, but Seneko, one of the best support players, period. Yeah, doubt he'll be caught so easily. I like, I like to see how it's all going to unfold. And of course, Na'Vi, this draft actually started to look pretty interesting and uh, very familiar to us until that Tinker pick came. And we're like, okay, we'll be general off lane. Like, we expect some kind of like strong safe laner. And then Axe comes in, the Tinker comes in, and Na'Vi just changed it up a little bit. But, well, we're going to find out how it's all going to unfold as the lanes come in. So it will be Miracle taking up the Magnus, who was the last pick for OG, up against Dendi in the mid. And you said that Navi's draft is kind of familiar. I think OG's is as well. They almost always have some sorts of sustain. They have the CM plus the Juggernaut Healing Ward. Usually they have the Phoenix, but with this sustain, they can always push high ground early. And they are known for pushing very early, 25, 20 minutes, sometimes ending the game. So with that tempo control, they can look for the opening. Damn, Miracle and uh, Dendi, they're just trading blows here in the mid, keeping Miracle as low as, the, as they possibly can. I want to watch that bottle timing as well for him, not to mention the BT's timing. Because that's when both these heroes, as you think about like for the critical times, Denny, you're looking for his BT's, you're looking for his progression into big mana items. Um, and Miracle, I, is the Blink Dagger going to be that impactful? Of course. I know, I know it's a Blink Dagger Magnus, it should be impactful anyway. Uh, but like, what's, this, what's the primary target you're searching for? Like, who can you go on when you first want to rotate off as the Magnus? It's always Tinker. When you take down a Tinker, you prevent the march so you can actually take objectives. He's pretty much the biggest one that can stop the pushes. You always have to worry about the Phoenix at some point. But with the mobility of the Tinker, he can split push all three. Uh, Art Style is bringing the army north, they're looking for crit. They cannot find him, however. Well, at least if they even if they do find him, General not wanting to throw out the arrow. Too busy just trying to defend his own camp. Also, not a bad D ward there from Navi, able to take out that high ground ward, which was watching over General's small camp. So we can now farm in a little bit more safety. 
in arrow mid. Miracle with the skewer on bottom. Yeah, he's just keeping Snako away from that rune. Miracle actually just narrowly dodged an arrow around like 120. And most of that is because he's, they're flying blind in the top lane. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe now fly. The army is right behind him. General is there. Arstyle will slow him down. The arrow is going to connect as Fly he needs a little bit more space. Able to get it. No tell. Creates a buffer with the spin. Even though Fly is low, he still wants to stick around and help out. No tell also copping a lot of damage for this. And the only thing which really lost here for Na'Vi was Arstyle's army. Still see him not really uh, able to jungle. They have plenty of sustain though. CMR plus the only ward should be A-OK -okay in this top lane. And... Not really too many stacks coming out from Na'Vi. Want to get that VOTs up ASAP. <laughs> and everyone's sitting on the edge of their seats right here. Kind of watch uh, Crit's also progression. Right now with three minutes in, he's only got half a level over on the ET. Like, how is how is Crit's progression meant to go? Is it meant to come through rotations? Is he meant to prep the stacks and then just leech experience? The support's job in the early game is to nullify the presence of the Enchantress. Art style has been known to wreak all sorts of havoc on the, chan on the Enchantress. So as long as... The Enchantress isn't doing that much, you don't really worry about levels on ET. He's okay. not a priority. Well, the Enchantress has still had some influence, but it hasn't found a kill at least. So it's just Arnstar rotating around, and Crit will <laughs> looks like he'll continue to run after him. But Arnstar won't stand for that one. Seneco, that Phoenix, has been one hell of a hero through the last couple of weeks. Dandy skewered back underneath the T1 tower. The Spear is down, he's in trouble. The Sunray will turn on Miracle, he's trying to keep up with it. The rage is there, Miracle! He'll find the kill, the Sunray's still on it, but it won't get through. Thanks to the storm from Crit. Now Tanako's on the run. Miracle's looking for two, and he's gonna get it as well. A double kill for OG to start up against Nami here in game one, and then make it thrice, as No Tail will catch out Marana on the top lane with the help of the Crystal Maiden. One of the most highly anticipated mid matchups, old school Dandy versus new school Miracle. And <laughs> Fairy Fire pulling through for him. And Miracle, so so patient as well until Denny slightly out of position back under that T1 tower. He knew what he was up against too, that ET rotating down. It was the Enchantress who was battling him before that ended up happening, but he still tries to contest and be strong inside the lane. It's been a pretty damn good lane for Denny so far. If you look at that CS, he's well ahead of Miracle. So that kill kind of brings Miracle, I say though, two kills, brings Miracle back in line with the Tinker. And Navi throwing more resources here, dropping the Observer Ward, hoping for an arrow from General to neutralize this lane. They have two wards set up there for him. Gotta keep those eyes up. It's like Dira and Moon also having a small little tussle on bottom lane, bringing themselves down to half-life before Moon was just able to jump away. We haven't actually really, like we've been seeing Moon here and there, but we haven't really seen his rotations yet. That level 6 is coming, and so will Moon. But look how deep Crit is. He smoked into the opposing jungle, trying to get eyes on this Enchantress. Maybe pop a smoke if he's lucky. Well, at, least, at least he still gets a deep Observer Ward, even if he doesn't find that kill. Also talking about the other Observer Wards is Snakeo. Put one down that cliffside. Looking to keep eyes on the bottom lane and potentially catch out Moon. A difficult target to do so, but it's the mid lane where Dendi stomped on for the moment. Miracle going to skewer him back right now. He puts down the Martian Machines, but Dendi is already dead. There was no way to go apart from down. Navi typically has just so much support in the mid lane, but with that smoke, knowing that no supports are there, that's just a free easy kill. And they also scout out the stacks. They're just setting up to gank those stacks at any moment's notice. Juggernaut, one of the best heroes to invade the opposing jungle with no creeps of support. Omni Slash surely gonna get a kill or two. So how do you ensure Dendi's farm? Do you swap him out with Diddy Ra? I think they just need to park the Phoenix there is more likely. The Sunray was really close to actually getting the first blood on Miracle and saving Dendi. Oh, Miracle. Well, Ricky might have left the game, but Miracle... He starts off the RP, but then he was just out of range of it, and he couldn't find the perfect angle. If he moved any closer, he would have come in, in range of that tower. And Seneco, in return, is actually throwing down a sentry ward. Well, unfortunately for him, he won't find either of the observer wards. OG just have such great depth of vision at the moment. They see both Seneco and Artstar moving to the side, and another sentry ward from Seneco is going to go begging. As he cannot find those obs of OG. Yeah, the, the last move that they made in the mid was just very aggressive, and it was with really great execution, so he knew that they were very, very confident moving up that high ground, which is not something that you see during nighttime without vision. But 
with those visions that Crit has placed deep in the jungle, they can do whatever they want. I'm loving this posturing from Notel, and then he turns it into a rotation. He was first staring down the barrel with General, because he's got Omni Slash up. He wants an isolated hero, and Dendi is probably going to be exactly that. Backing up, the creep wave is there, however. So there's no easy option for Notel. But he also knows that Dendi is alone, thanks to those two Observer Wards. These two supports have sat behind Moon for the uh, last Dendi's 30 dead. seconds. Dendi is actually dead. Omni Slash to go. Fall out with a spin. There's no way for him to really survive that. Miracle gonna skewer forward. Zaneko, no, oh, he'll be able to just... Okay, with the Sun Ray and the damage from the tower, Miracle's gonna drop very low, but his bottom line with Axis goes ham. Getting both Void and the Elder Titan. Flies on the run, but now, finally, Navi get themselves on that board. They're running back behind the town, they can use the Centaur to tank it up with the Santa Blast there, they gotta find another one! E.T., Void, and C.M. all on the sidelines. Wow, what's... But you keep trading off your Tinker for now what's the first kills of the game. What's crazy about that is OG knew that Gink was coming and they, they were trying to set up with the Faceless Void, but Axe is just too darn tanky. Where's their damage coming from? One point in natural order doesn't do anything versus the uh, style. 40 damage to X. That's very, very low. <laughs> They need CM6 ASAP. It combos so well with RP, with ET Ultimate, and Chronosphere. Without the Juggernaut having his Omni Slash, there's just not that much damage flying around the map. So just patience until it's back off cooldown. Work around these Ultimates. Right, actually have the two big team fight controllers. They've been and doing a that... really good job of handling art style though. <laughs> Yeah, normally Artstyle is the man who dictates the pace of the game for Na'Vi. That was one of the big reasons why like, they looked towards the Chen, they looked towards the Enchantress. And now, well, he's got the two assists thanks to the successful kills on bottom lane. But they have to deal with a Blink Dagger over a Miracle. So, that Magnus Blink, that big initiation is available for him. Yeah, they maybe with the Moonlight Shadow they can dodge this. I don't see any dust on the side of OG right now. And you're and right. The general have... has picked it up at level 6. But here we go with the first potential blink RP. Miracle and crit. Yep. Smoke up right behind that tier 2 tower looking for an opening. The question is just how obvious will it be to Na'Vi? They've only got two real wards which look over the river. Which is in the top as well as on that bot lane behind the T1 tower. Three yeah. heroes are showing though. Okay. Yeah. You might think that Magnus is just doing stacks right now to get his blink dagger. You don't actually know when it's going to come out, but maybe the march will Here stop. Here they come. That observer ward sees a hell of a lot. Miracle going to jump in, goes to the skewer bridge, brings him in range of Zaneko with the spirit down. Then he's gone as well. OG, a perfect execution. Navi tried to moonlight Shadow to escape out of it, but it was over before the Shadow had effect. Man, that's brutal in dealing with the Tinker. The thing about killing him right now, he has very, very little reliable gold. And when you're saving it for a big ticket item like BOTs, it's not like you're going to be Magnus and, you know, maybe buy a Bracer, buy a Wand before you're going for that. You need that BOTs. And you called it perfectly with the control of Dendi being a priority target. And then the first big movement coming out from the Magnus, he finds Dendi as well as Suneiko. So not just taking the main prize, taking the consolation. Attempted denial won't work. And OG with five heroes secure that tier one tower in mid. And I must command crit for his for his early game. Just mirroring the Enchantress's movements in the early game, setting up those wards just so that nine minute RP would connect with very high success rate. Miracle gets... <laughs> he, has, he has to wait. He has to wait five seconds, thanks to the good arrow from General. The skewer will get him back out of the river and away from that double damage rune. They it's don't like... really have a good way to prevent the RP from going off into a fight. They had to jump on him with the axe. This feels like bait again. Like this time they, they put Dendi hanging out and you move Didiran and Snake onto the cover of smoke just behind that tier one tower. They're hoping for a target. The ET is probably going to be the only one they can go on. But they have to understand too, the OG support can arrive quickly, and you have to keep in mind that Chronosphere from Moon. This can shut down Navi's aggression very, very quickly. Whoop. So we'll have ourselves a moment. So, so far, OG seem to... Like, apart from the small little mishap on bottom lane, they seem to be in pretty good control of this game. Yeah, I would say that's an, that's an understatement. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna try again. So restart. Let's go. Dyer's courier 
has been killed. So going into the series, Toby, how big of a Navi fan are you? From <laughs> from oh. one to Toby 2012. You know what? When when Navi when Navi win a Valve tournament again, then I, pr I might go back to what I used to be. Uh, Art style, a little bit of trouble. No tail. He kind of wants to go for this one. The arrow is soaked up by the spin. Keeps it going. Art style's low, but Art, uh, no tail can't keep it going. He's got the Omni Slash available, but with the creep wave following him down, he just couldn't get a guaranteed kill on Enchantress. So he keeps the risk of the Omni Slash in Navi's mind. And even if he had died there, he'd still be creating space for Tinker. 1700 gold for him. Really desperate for those VOTs. He needs the VTs. Like when, you, when you're skipping everything else, like. I suppose he hasn't. Like, he's still got the Null Talus, but he's still got the Soul Ring to work with. And now OG moving in for the next objective. General. A uh, quick leap away. It's a little bit of the downside about uh, both the Crystal Maiden as well as the ET. They don't have the greatest control up against the Mirana. It's not that straight grip control. You got the frostbite, but everything else is the timing with the stomp. RP is low enough of a cooldown though that they don't need it from their support, especially yep. when you have an arcane rune. Well, means Navi is not going to try and fight this. OG scan behind the tower just to make sure that no one's going to be there. And this will be an easy T1 tower on bot lane. If they uh, don't get Toshi, they'll just take Roach out very soon with the healing ward. And Tinker is decent around the pit, but not before he has Blink. Mm -hmm. Guilty's up finally though for Dendi, 12 minutes in. You do have the Blink over on, like, with the Blink over on Didier Ra, and now with the Dragonlance also arriving on Art Style, they got ways where they can, they can reach in with the damage. I don't know if they can stay completely out of range of an RP as well as a like a time walk into a chronosphere. That is a whole different kettle of fish. They really only have one good way of initiation though, which is a blink axe, which is easily countered by no. the stomp from Elder Titan or the chronosphere. Even throwing down a healing ward is decent, but the big man is the Magnus with the RP. And I still don't see a great solution for them in the team fights for yeah. that. And I think right. they can hope for a bed of marches, maybe one or two, and then that will disable the blink daggers. Mm -hmm. But then Denny also needs that time created. Like you need Supernova to hit. You need to have like long, long arrows. You need like multiple hero calls. This is a lot of the things which make this Navi lineup difficult to execute. But they're coming over and they want to have a look at Roshan. They they understand the same thing that this is going to be a critical place. But OG have already left. They've gone back into their own jungle. Back into farming mode, using the empower and just advancing that farm of Moon so quickly. Allows him to actually go for this treads into Vlad's. And OG can still off farm them with the, just the threat of having Roche. With Enchantress not having Max Untouchable, Navi don't pose a threat to Roshan just yet. No. It's almost like Navi just want to have OG go in so they can counter initiate. That'll give him a chance when maybe OG is a little bit lower. Maybe they've used a couple of abilities beforehand. Yeah, we see the Marana going for an Ags right now, so this combined with March and Rocket, I think OG should definitely be eyeing a pipe at some point. But it looks like going more offensive, Faceless Void going for the Vlads, we see the perhaps a Veil coming out on the Elder Radiant Titan with a double null. Mm -hmm. That's a big uh, group up, make sure your team fights more stronger. Tier 1 tower on the bottom lane is uh, going to be trying to be mopped up here by Na'Vi, Miracle waiting in the trees for anyone from Na'Vi to come in close. There's a couple of pings coming out at the moment. They know exactly where they are. The Spirit Stomp's gonna catch Didier Ra just in front of the T1 tower. They're okay with this right now until Miracle gets the push back. Didier Ra goes for the call, but he's still completely stranded. You can Icarus dive forward, but it's already too late. The Axe has been lost and OG get the better trade-off. They took the T1 tower on top. It seems as if they, if they control the Axe and the team fights, they just have no response to any sort of jump that OG oh, has. Notel. He's trying to push out style away from the creep wave. Damn, that crit from Notel still doing work. He can just finish the job with a spin. There's no TP support coming in. Even if it was tried, the creep got killed off. Now style tries to go into the maze. Notel the Sunstrike. Sunray is not doing enough. And with a leap forward general, well, they can catch out this juggernaut. The question is, they still have enough damage. And the answer is no. Notel can just walk away and get away with murder. Yeah, nice play coming out from him. I guess if he really felt threatened, he could have spun TV. There's no way they can stop that bar supernova, I suppose, or a blink call, which he was dead for. And OG just starting to rack up an advantage. 8k worth of net worth sitting on the Juggernaut. Overall, 7k going the way of OG. I think they've managed to slow down the pace of the game to something that they're comfortable with, and Navi typically a little bit more aggressive, wanting to get more kills, and 
they don't exactly have the best late game. If it's all in on a Tinker, they can just throw multiple ultimates mm -hmm. onto him. Might feel a little bit more confident in, in uh, like Na'Vi's approach if they had a different style to the game, like different style heroes. Like I, I know I was talking about during the draft phase, if you had something like a Bane, for example, that can combo with that Mirana, like you get the lockdowns, you get the pick off, then you're back to farming. You make fear on the map for OG to walk around so then Dendi can have space. But right now, like how much of a of a presence has Tiri Ra really had? Like he blinks in and OG's like, fine, we'll, we'll blink and we'll skewer you back in, in deeper. So no one can really help you. The Phoenix Sunray, Ever since that first moment where it's like, oh, maybe this can find a kill on Miracle, you're going to think back to that moment, it's been the same kind of thing. It's it's almost a presence, but it's not enough to actually get a kill on OG. Yeah, he seems like they're, he's the only threat right now. Maybe the threat of the Moonlight Shadow can come out at some point, but... but wait, 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 where's your follow-up? Like, it's like Moonlight Shadow went to call down, uh, into call? Berserker's call? Eventually, they may have enough damage with, like, a Tinker Dagon to just instantly burst people. Yeah. Still, that's very risky without any lockdown, especially if it's a hero like Juggernaut, Void. And, and we're still talking, like, what happens when Denny's able to reach that. Like, he's got VTs, that's fantastic, but he still needs a maneuverability item, right? Like, he needs to get that Blink Dagger to get away from Kurno or potential Magnus initiation. Mm -hmm. And he's pretty close to getting that, sitting at 2k gold. Now over on the Tinker. Not if they lose this fight, though, and they're setting up for that scam. That scan from OG is down. They want to see him, but Na'Vi actually go the long way around. And there's Miracle. It's going to break, but the call, it doesn't come in time from Didira. Fly wants to turn. They've got a perfect Observer and Sentry on the hillside. So they see Na'Vi coming. Roshan will go down. Juggernaut has the Aegis, the Immortal, the Nova on the back end of the pit. It's actually causing problems for Moon, but it's a spin. Didira gets the call out. Fly's going to go down. No tails. Too early on the dunk, but you've still got Seneca with the Sunray, allowing Didira to escape. They burn the Aegis to the Immortal. Diving away, the Chronosphere only controlling Dendi with that laser. He can't get the hit off. Did Ra comes in? Moon's so low and he will drop down. They try and run away now. Seneca is still on the run, away from Nortal. With that crew, he's able to finish the job. So OG, they take Roshan, but the Aegis the Immortal does not survive long. Miracle hoping for a two-man RP there. Phoenix really quick with the dive. And they just weren't able to combo anything. Elder Titan still was not able to use his ultimate. That was a masterful smoke pop. That could have gone much worse for OG, especially with that arrow to lead off. It really could have. But Na'Vi can still be happy now, at least on the top of their net worth. You're starting to see three heroes with good momentum, 6.8 to 6.3k between the Tinker Axe as well as the Mirana. This is allowing Denny to have more of a of a global map control, and we'll see OG being tested on this. They got ways they can catch out the Tinker, but do you want to really turn this into where you start setting up traps? For now, with the Empower, they've been moving across the map and just farming wherever the hell they want to. Well, you, they don't have the tools to push the high ground, so that's kind of the only way to really deal with Tinker mm -hmm. at this point. Blink RP is... it's not easy at all, versus the March. Shadow Blade is, oh. is much more reliable. TP's coming in, and this, this is the bait I was talking about. It's only with two heroes, and Dendi into the trees. He already uses Rearm, but he'll blink away from the stomp. And stay in relative safety, but... It definitely goes to show that... Dendi is not an immortal when he goes for the split push, but with that blink dagger, he can play around OG and makes life very difficult for him. And finally, they're going to catch out both the OBS and the Sentry, which is there for OG in the fight. Seems like they need another way to catch him out, or they can just be content to farm. Looks like Moon has gone for more farmy items. On a no tell. General's fine to stand his ground here, especially when no tell used a lot of that spin just to come and close the gap between the two of them. <laughs> Got Moon playing catch with arrows. They're bringing more support now down to the bottom lane. OG feeling a little bit of pressure. I think with the way that Roshan fight though went down that OG just want to take it late. Otherwise we would see maybe like a Scepter build on the Faceless Void instead of the Asha. That is the way like OG does play a lot. Like I don't have a staff for it, but I know like a lot of their games they look to end at around the 40-45 minute mark. It's not really close it out in the early game. Is patience until you find that perfect timing to win. They aren't too scared of the late game because of, of their scaling. And if things go really bad, they can always just get refreshers on Faceless Void and Magnus. And now we have no answer for that in team fights. Yeah. You almost have to force OG into a bad trade-off position then. But for now, Navi can't really force that much. But they are getting more and more space. 
As time goes on, everyone continues to farm up. Nidhi Ra is probably the most exposed here in the mid lane. So Miracle gonna capitalize on the Chronosphere. Now for Moon, it's almost like insurance, but Nidhi Ra is really, really tanky, finally. The others are free, and it's, it's Fly who takes the kill. Yeah, and a few more heroes gearing up for late game. See Tinker going for another mana item, as opposed to fighting item like a Dagon. What is the build for Dendi here when you when you look at it? A lot of people like just like mana items, so you can farm more. Ooh, Snake Oak. Be ready to die, boy. Maybe he's gonna help out General jumping forward with the surprise general. I think he knows he's dead. He leaves down, or maybe not, with the sick charges. Moon doesn't have Chronos because they commit towards the middle lane, but the shockwave is there for Miracle to ensure the kill. But this is still a heavy rotation. There's five heroes going towards the top lane. Yes, they do catch out the Mirana, but instantly then Deadly starts adding pressure down on the bottom lane, keeping OG looking behind themselves all the time. Talk about OG having to farm those items that allow them to go high ground. Like, do you almost get like BTs and blink daggers? Like, you went to Vlad's early over on over on Moon with a cash with a Yasha at the moment. Does he need that blink dagger so they can they can catch out the Tinker? I think they just need they just need to farm more for later. I think if you go blink dagger, it's gonna hurt your farming speed too much. And it's not like Navi are really looking for engagements right now. They're just looking to, you know, sacrifice heroes here and there, take small risks, so you don't lose Dendi. So you focus how uh, like like making your cores almost immortal so you can go high ground and you'll yeah. be insanely tanky. Okay. Just get a lot of items, healing ward will continue to keep on scaling, and they still aren't gonna have that the greatest of lockdown. And if Dendi wants to go for a sheep, he's their main source of disable, and then they can just easily lock him down with Faces Void if they go on Magnus, or Magnus if they go on Faces Void. There's a Navi smoke group again. Four heroes together, looking to wrap around OG, feeling that something is wrong. They actually just burnt their scan on the bottom part of the river. But Navi has managed to enter into the OG jungle to look in behind. And what are they going to find? Snake O. Well, there's your blink call. They won fly. Moon actually jumping through the arrogance for three man chrono, including Snake Can he actually get the egg off? No, we can't. No, when Miracle comes through, we're going to fall up in. They go to rolling as well. Navi is gonna get wide. They thought they were the aggressors, but they're gonna be sent back packing. Dendi maybe gonna survive this one. Blink Dagger for cooldown up on the hill and going home as quickly as he can. Oh boy, Navi were not ready for that one. The Moon Chronosphere, absolutely perfect. They really wanted that arrow to control him and it just didn't reach in time. Yeah, for the looks of it, it might seem like OG just have two big team fight tools and Chrono and RP, but even so, you have to worry about the stomp. The stomp will set up for massive team fight potential from OG, and <laughs> they didn't even get a CM at the end of the day. Um, they. I know how you go against that again. Like you, you were saying, like you got so much team fight from OG. That was the great scenario for OG where it all was able to hit. Like. The RP was just the icing on the cake at the end of the day. It was the Moon Chronosphere that just put that that gank, like stopping it directly in his tracks. And all they can do is do this. It's it's almost prolonging. I don't want to say the inevitable because it's not inevitable yet. But with the split push, OG's forced to come back. They're forced to go back into this into this heavy farming and just keep prepping for that GG moment. They just need an item that can catch out Dendi. I think a Yule Scepter would be really good. I'm not sure who would build it, though. Let me see the difference. I think Tinker really fell out of favor once Yule's got that uh, got that small amount of damage to disable Blink. Because once you Yule's him, he's, he's just dead. You aren't going to be able to channel Rearm into a Blink out. Mm -hmm. Or build a Yule's yourself to Blink out. It's a very uncommon build. You see the difference between the between the players right now. Like we just fired it up there, and the fact that no tell. Even during that period of time, we're flagging it. He took his hands off the keyboard, just having a drink. This is this is a walk in the park for them at the moment. Nortel knows he's practically invincible once that Scotty is done, which is only a couple of hundred gold from completion. Don't underestimate Sunray, Toby. <laughs> it's you're right. It's very percentage based pure. It's very very true. Sunray is a wonderful thing, but so far we haven't even seen like a like a Nova. Oh, did you run? Uh, he's yeah, being attacked in the trees. He spins through, but OG didn't see it. And he'll just TP away to safety. The rest of Navi are already bailing out of here. Everyone is missing on the map for OG, so... Get back to safety, get back to farm. And Sneeko just out of range of that Tinker Ward. And it looks like OG are prepping for that next step. We see a Tinker Ward on the very top side of the map, as well as the very bottom side of the map, too. Near the Radiant T2. Yeah. So they're, they're taking... 
They're taking pretty good measures. Elder yeah. Titan can constantly scout out with his spirit around the edge of the map, so... Yeah. If, if you're Dendi, you don't feel safe. Yeah. OG won't be caught. Like, they won't be saying, hey, we don't know where Dendi's moving. Obviously, he's normally quite obvious when you throw a march of machines down inside lanes time and time again. Yeah, he's not dying too much, but still, the, it's just the, the fear. Yeah. The fear of just getting <laughs> ulted, and they would definitely solo Chrono or solo RP and if they could ever get their hands on him. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Because you, you can tag team it as well, right? Like, it's like what we saw with, uh, like, when you ran the Enigma and the uh, Tidehunter lineups. Well, I got Ravage at one point, I got a Black Hole at another. No matter what happens, they're going to enable no -tail to inflict this damage, which is already buffed up. The fact that he doesn't actually have to go for a Battle Fury because he can use the, the level 4 in power from the Magnus means that these tankier items are also available while still having that bonus damage. Once General gets his Blink Dagger, if he's getting a Blink Dagger, yeah, he's, he just picked up his Blink Dagger in the base, so this is a second second threat of the split push and he has even more mobility in the tinker because he can just blink out and then leap and none of the blink heroes will be able to chase him <laughs> unless miracle gets like a blink skewer force now to catch him out but that's that's pretty unlikely so now Morana can add to navi split push threat buy some more time is that when tinker. we actually start looking for og to pick up something like a gem because i i doubt you're going to have your two initiators carrying dust or something along those lines so like if, if he does escape like you trigger moonlight shadow you know, if you're leaping and also blinking into tree lines, then you're not going to have true sight anyway. There's no Beastmaster, there's no Night Stalker in this game. I think Shadow Blade is a little bit better. Like, Blink is decent, but if he covers and marches, he's not scared of the Blink because he'll get disabled. It's not like you're going to preemptively pop a BKB so you can get a Blink issue on a Tinker. At least not in a regular gank. In a team fight, yes. But Navi have not really been in a point where OG can team fight them. Maybe this will change, though, with Aegis number two. Yeah, quick and easy Roshan for OG. Navi were definitely not going to try and contest that one. And they wasted her scan. They used it like right before Roshan popped. So if you're OG at the moment, you've got Nagus modeling, you're, you're staring down the barrel of 30 minutes into the game, you've got most of your of the items you're searching for in the mid game. Do you just systematically take out tier 2 towers now, or are you feeling slightly more inclined that you can push and threaten tier 3s? You try and pressure Denzi into making a mistake, whether that's pushing out T2s, whether that's everyone farming the neutrals and making the map black for Denzi. Maybe it's getting a gem and just taking down all his vision. Just making sure that Dendi just needs one mistake, and then <laughs> after that, you can just like all in on him once his buyback is down. I'll say that that would be the next thing to stare at. Like, watch Dendi's money. How much do you even want to invest into into items when you also need to make sure you got enough money for buyback? That Marana on top lane is still having a free time on the tier three tower. She brought that down by about one fifth of its health. And OG are refusing to come back. They're actually still on bottom lane at the moment. And this is the this is the kind of situation you get into in a game with OG where you know your team fight is so superior that you could just lose out in the in the game of trades. That's a Marana with no right click. She's only hitting for plus down damage. That's just that little bit of chip, and then she can come back anyway. So no tell rips through the tower, does as much damage as that Marana did in the space of maybe two seconds as Marana did in the last two. Look minutes. how far back he's forced to march. It doesn't yeah. even get to the bottom of the hill. Which is really bad, because how are they supposed to kill a healing, healing ward? No tell yeah. just take it through. That's why Alistar was trying to pump out more damage, but that fresh Aghanim Scepter over on him. He does have more, but it's still... It's a, it's a tall order. And Snaker stomped up. Nortel wants to commit. Snaker has to Icarus dive himself away. Turns on the Sunray very early on. So Nortel just backs out through that march and wants to turn and come in again. No healing ward for 27 seconds, so he'll have to wait out before they can heal up and go straight back in. But then again, he also has the Aegis, the Immortal, as well as a crap ton of life. 2.7k on that Jugger for Na'Vi to get through. While Sunray's down, you feel more confident. Starts to spin, beats into the racks. It's like OG won't even want to fight at this point. They'll just chip away at the racks bit by bit, but won't initiate until Na'Vi comes at them. Yep, this is, you know, you, you, they probably saw the 90 minute game and like, ah, we don't want to, we don't want to get there. <laughs> Let's end it now. There's no telling, back in again. Start the spin. Easy to do damage. They can't uh, do any magical pop on him while he's doing it. And now the melee rack, they have to fortify Na'Vi. But it's over now. And no tell. They did it. No engagement. And this is right from OG. And Na'Vi, like, what do you, you, you can't, you can't force the fight because you're forcing the fight up against an Aegis Immortal Hero. If you burn any abilities on him, you got nothing left later on. Even if they blow so many abilities on him, I don't think he's going to die. He's very tanky. If he's going for an Abyssal, he went for the Vanguard first, just yep. so he's a better tower seeker.
So they can come in again and just rinse and repeat. You got one minute and 47 seconds left on an Aegis Immortal, and Notel will use every bit of it he possibly can. Just spinning and attacking into the buildings. So he'll come back again in, t in 12 seconds and do it all over again. That's OG waiting the back lines. Navi, they have to do something, and that's what they're trying to do. They moonlight Shadow and they try and walk out. OG, they feel it coming. And they throw down that sentry ward. Still a couple minutes left on the Aegis, and if Navi don't do anything, they're going to just lose two racks for free. I don't know how Tinker's supposed to show himself, though. There's a Yule's up now, and the Elder Titans to catch him out. Miracle and Moon. Oh, that arrow is nice. The call as well. No tail. He's being pulled in a little bit too deep. A lot deeper than he really wanted to. The damage from Master really isn't anywhere near enough without trying to do it, but with the pull back out, D-Rise outside the face while General is locked down by Moon's Chronosphere. You can take it already, that axe. No, well, he does have the buyback available. They're expending it at this point. Navi need to save every bit of money they've got, so they need March of the Machines to keep OG out. And a ton of other sustain coming out. Aside from the Healing Ore, double Tranquils on the support. Earns. It's a five second arrow on Miracle, which won't do anything apart from make him cop a little bit of damage from March of the Machines. Again, no to the front lines that Aegis can't have much longer left on it. But now no tail jumps in, Arsal, huge damage already! He's already brought down by the Juggernaut, you get a small arrow on the fly, but there's no way to follow up. The Axe is already brought back. So OG, they got him through the tower, the bottom lane's pushing in, they rinse and repeat. The Aegis Immortal though will be gone shortly. And the Dragonlance Enchantress is the best way that they have to kill the Healing Orb, and it still has... A good amount of duration, but there goes Nortel's Aegis. So finally, Navi have a, a way where they can maybe initiate on, on uh, Nortel and bring him down. And then the call, two men caught out, Moon there as well. Chris locked in, but the RP from Miracle, keeping him out. Denny and General locked together. Denny's down, he'll have to buy back very, very quickly as Miracle skewer away under the cover of the ET splitter. D Ra shockwave as well as Nova down by the Crystal Maiden. More buybacks arriving from Navi. And OG again, they force more expenditure from Na'Vi, they back out, they buy out more stuff, there's a full pipe, now over on a Crystal Maiden. This is just, this is a slow, painful death for Na'Vi. Yeah, and OG like, not making any mistakes. Seems like OG just know exactly how to draft versus them. If it's not the CM and the Jug, it's like Dazzle plus one, and just having this constant sustain so they never have to back off the wheel. They've yep. been sitting outside oh, the Nova. Like five Smack bang minutes. in the middle of OG, the Omni Slash, and he's caught out, he's already down. That is actually a full death. There is no buyback available for the Tinker in the Yule Center. Catching the Phoenix, mid Icarus dies, and Aker is gone as well. And OG, they are putting the nails in the Navi coffin, and there it is, GG. OG will take game one of this best of three. They just seem to have Navi's, <laughs> Navi's pay straight out. And I think Vi just played against him too many, <laughs> one too many times. This actually gives me uh, flashbacks to that same Dream League final, the 3-0 where OG just seemed to have all the control. And they, they, they came out of that final and they were just like, yep, okay, another day at the office, it's just what we do. And this game, it didn't feel like it was much different. OG never really let go of the reins. Navi just have individual tools though. It's like the art style Chen or the Enchantress, the Dendi Tinker, but where's the synergy? Where's, how are they yeah. gonna win the game? You yeah. can't win the game just based off one, one hero. I guess yeah. that's what OG